welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the third and final video in IB Biology Higher Level Topic 8, Metabolism, Respiration and Photosynthesis, where we will be looking at photosynthesis, including chloroplasts, the light-dependent reactions, light-independent reactions, and Calvin's lollipop experiment. Before watching this video, we recommend completing our Topic 2 video series to ensure you have a solid foundation in metabolism and photosynthesis. In addition, the previous video in this series, covering respiration, explains important processes included in this video. In the final video of Topic 2, we introduce photosynthesis as the process by which a cell uses light, CO2 and water to generate organic compounds and oxygen. We also outlined the equation for the reaction and described how this process relies on the absorption of light by chlorophyll. However, for the IB Biology higher level syllabus, you must recall photosynthesis in far more detail. As a summary, we can divide photosynthesis into two sections, the light dependent and light independent reactions. Like with respiration, to contextualize these reactions, it is useful to first understand the structure of the organelle that carries them out, the chloroplast. Chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis. Like mitochondria, they have a unique structure which you must draw and annotate. They have a double membrane, known as the chloroplast envelope. They contain a stroma, like a cytoplasm, which contains starch grains, lipid droplets and enzymes all required for the light-independent reactions. They contain their own DNA and 70S ribosomes to synthesize proteins and enzymes. They contain systems of internal membranes, known as thylakoids, increasing the surface area for the light-dependent reactions. Within each thylakoid are multiple regions of space with a high density of chlorophyll, known as photosystems, each containing a reaction center. Thylakoids are stacked on top of one another to form towers known as grana. These form deep towers to optimize light absorption and are evenly distributed throughout the stroma for easy access to NADPH and ATP. Inside the thylakoid is the narrow thylakoid space to assist in establishing the H plus concentration gradient. Like with mitochondria, the IB expects you to recognize these structures on an electron micrograph for example, like this. So you now understand their structure, let's cover what processes they conduct, starting with the light-dependent reactions. The light-dependent reactions, also called photophosphorylation, take place in and across the thylakoid space and membrane. Like their name implies, they use light to phosphorylate ADP into ATP and reduce NADP into NADPH used in the subsequent light-independent reactions. Like in the mitochondria, it is subdivided into the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. The electron transport chain is a collection of photosystems, proton pumps and electron carriers, embedded in the thylakoid membrane, carrying out a four-stage process. First, photoactivation 1 occurs within the reaction centre of photosystem 2. During this, two photons of light are absorbed by the reaction centre and used to promote two electrons, which are donated to an electron acceptor known as plastoquinone, reducing it. This process occurs twice, producing two reduced plastoquinone and removing four electrons from the reaction centre. The lost electrons are replenished by photolysis, which is the process by which the reaction centre splits water into oxygen, four protons and four electrons. Next, the plastoquinone from photoactivation 1 are oxidized, each releasing two electrons to a proton pump in the electron transport chain. Each electron provides energy to pump 1H plus from the stroma to the thylakoid space, so 4H plus are pumped in total. Unlike oxidative phosphorylation, only one proton pump is utilized in photophosphorylation. However, it is worth noting the H plus from photolysis contributes to the concentration gradient. Once used, the electrons are accepted by another electron acceptor, known as plastocyanin, reducing it. Next, photoactivation 2 occurs at photosystem 1. 
This process is identical to before, except that the two photons of light only promote one electron. Like previously, this excited electron is donated, this time to ferrodoxin, which itself is reduced. This process occurs twice, thereby producing two reduced ferrodoxin and removing two electrons from the chlorophyll at the reaction centre, i.e. half as many as photoactivation 1. Plastocyanin, from photoactivation 1, then donates its electrons to photosystem 1, replacing the electrons lost in photoactivation 2. Lastly, the ferrodoxin from photoactivation 2 reduces 1 ADP to form 1 ADPH, used in the light-independent reactions. An important caveat rarely tested in the exam is that NADP can sometimes run out, preventing this stage. In this situation, ferrodoxin deposits its electrons to the proton pump in the electron transport chain, like plastoquinone, known as cyclic photophosphorylation. The electron transport chain therefore creates a concentration gradient of H plus across the thylakoid membrane, with a high concentration of H plus in the thylakoid space and a low concentration in the stroma. This is then used by chemiosmosis, a two-stage process. The H plus diffuses from the thylakoid space into the stroma through ATP synthase. This provides energy for ATP synthase to phosphorylate 1 ADP to produce 1 ATP. So now that we have established a large collection of NADPH, how is this used to generate glucose? Q the light independent reactions. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.